he will run uh, this presentation here. Uh, we have been looking uh, at the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, and uh, we would like to point to some of uh, the articles there that we think could be uh, useful for people with ALS. This uh, convention was signed by all Nordic countries this year, and on Norway signed it in March. Uh, yeah, this is one point that could be important for those in the Nordic countries that would like to uh, use respirator. State parties reaffirm that every human being has the inherent right to life. We are just uh, emphasizing some of the points here. I think you can take the next one. And here is something about uh, living at home. I know, at least in Norway, people have, uh, are forced, almost forced, to move into nursing homes because of the, it's very expensive to uh, receive the care at home. So here from article 19a, persons with disabilities have the opportunity to choose their place of residence and where and with whom they live and on equal basis with others and are not obligated, obligated to live in a particular living arrangement. And uh, concerning mobility, ensure personal mobility with the greatest possible independence. There is uh, Article 21, people working with what is called AAC, Alternative and Augmentative Communication. Uh, I appreciate this article very much because uh, it says something about uh, that it should be facilitated, uh, Augmentative or Alternative Communication. Partly means something for people with ALS, and uh, but it also means a lot to other groups that are not able to speak. Uh, so far, it's only been people with sign sign language uh, who has uh, some rights concerning this. <coughs> Habilitation and rehabilitation, Article 26, enable person with disabilities to attain and maintain maximum independence through physical, mental, social and vocational ability and full inclusion and participation in all aspects of life. Uh, assistive technology uh, is uh, when you use technology to help you to get better quality of life. I think that's the way to put it. We very often talk about assistive technology and AAC. So AAC means uh, an alternative to voice. And uh, the goals for using assistive technology, it could be more, but we have put four here. Communicating, it's very important. I think when I meet people I've been working with uh, adopting assistive technology for 17 years, I think. And when I meet people that are, lost their voice and the uh, ability to walk, I think the voice is the most uh, important. And mobility. Uh, mobility means uh, that you're able to maneuver a wheelchair, for instance. And maintain a social life independence in daily activities. And independence, uh, it means more uh, for people who are very paralyzed, it means more uh, uh, that you are able to decide yourself. It's just like uh, uh, everybody in a modern society needs help from other persons, for instance, 
I need help and I have a problem for instance, with plumbing or need a carpenter. And some of us also need help with uh, to get dressed. But everybody in our society needs help from somebody else. So it's about deciding yourself. Next. Functions. Um, communication is the first one you lose. I think already I've seen some of it. Uh, with speech output. Do you have like some other examples? I know we also have something with the whole sentences. Mostly you are using uh, uh, synthetic speech, you're writing and it's uh, out as speech. But here also an example where you have uh, already made sentences. And in the last example it was also some of the sentences was meant when you are starting a conversation, some of them was to keep the conversation going, and some of them to end the conversation. And here you have some uh, for your carers. That one is uh, great, I think. Here you can ask people to look at the screen and I can uh, show them exactly the like a German XP with circles German so you can say where it's itching or where you're hurt and you have uh, the body from different pictures of body from different angles you can point out, point out exactly where it is Okay, I think we move on to the next one. Alternative wheelchair control. With alternative, I mean uh, not using joystick, which is, which is the most common way to drive a wheelchair. So maybe you could show us how you are driving your wheelchair, but you not drive. Okay, she's driving that way. Did you roll top? Yeah. So you can point to different directions. So you can actually drive with the uh, eye control. Or using a head mouse or switch or whatever input device you're using. Here is uh, adjustment of the sitting position. That you can do without running off platform. You see he's moving his uh, sitting position. Now that's very important when you're sitting in the same chair the whole day. And also you saw he can uh, move away the screen. For instance when you're watching television and so it's good to uh, yeah. <laughs> take away the screen. Uh, the next one, yeah, here we have the remote control, so you can control DVD, television and so on. I know we, now we have a lot of equipment that can be operated by uh, remote control. Phone, And the uh, next uh, thing here, Julio says text messages. 
with a mobile or cellular phone? Yeah. So he writes the text and then press the number or name of the person who are going to get the text message. And uh, the next one says family life. I know you have a granddaughter. I remember when uh, we have been working together almost since you got your diagnosis. And uh, what was very important for you, I remember, was that your grandchild should come on your lap when you was not able to lift her up anymore. So you had to put some exciting things on the screen. in the screen on the wheelchair. That is the browser with the keyboard and you can also take away the keyboard. And you can also read uh, from the internet pages with voice. Yeah, that is an example of one for which newspaper, VG. <laughs> so, if you have been connected now, you get the menu. Now, this is uh, what you call VAP from the mobile phone. So, you don't get an advertisement, you just get the articles. And this is, yeah, internet radio. It's a time left, isn't it? Hmm? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Three minutes left. Yeah. And this is the email. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we can move on to the next one since there are only two and a half minutes left. Uh, input device. Julius is using. Uh, uh, eye control, and I saw that you was using uh, head mouse, yeah. And actually, you can use uh, head mouse for a very long time, actually, because there are built-in uh, mouse amplifier. So uh, I remember before we got that, you just has to place everything in the center of the screen because it was not able to use the whole screen. But now you can amplify uh, the window settings up to 20 times. And also gliding pointer. It's like curling, but you can send away the cursor by moving the head. So actually with the head mouse you can operate uh, for a long time. And some people are also starting with touch screen. And uh, some people using touch screen can start with a smaller device. And this is also good for um, head mouse. It's not taking so much of your view. 
And uh, I think you can take the next one, the last one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, on the first booth outside here, Falk Egil. You can try head mouse, eye tracking, <coughs> switches, touchscreen, different input devices with uh, the software developed in cooperation with Moscow. Thank you.